All right, in this tutorial, we'll be performing the Geo replication for Azure SQL database. So this is the architecture diagram which we'll be performing today. As we can see, the two SQL servers are in different geographical locations. One is in East US region and the second one is in the Central US region. So we can configure according to our business needs any region and the primary goal of configuring Geo replication is to manage failover operation that is let's say our primary server is down due to some region let's say there is a earthquake in this region or a, a fire in the data center and this is down uh, this primary server is zapped out now how do we continue our uh, production workloads right if the entire database is down so that's what we will be doing that is our uh, even if our primary server is down how do we set up the secondary or the replica such that our business is operational even in case of disasters and uh, we will uh, implement the concept of high ability right so this is the disaster recovery scenario this is very important so let's uh, dive into the azure portal to implement this concept we are in the azure portal so first things first we need to create one server that is sql server where our database will reside i'll click on sql server create sql server let's give a name for our sql server so after we are done location will be east us because as per the architecture diagram remember east us is our primary server right so that's what uh, we require uh, we will we have configured uh, we will configure the primary uh, server as the east us later the secondary in the central us let's go down and authentication mode will be using sql authentication please uh, note uh, your login admin and uh, password let's give it uh, one login admin and password so here, since we'll be querying and inserting some uh, creating tables and inserting values in the table, we need to go to the networking tab. And please remember this credentials and keep it safe somewhere. And here, allow Azure services to access this server. This, I'll check it as yes, because we know later um, we might need to add firewall. So in order to avoid those kind of things, it's better to switch it on, right? and we'll keep everything as default i'll go to review and create i'll keep this simple and click on the create button let's wait till our azure sql database server is ready then we'll be proceeding with the database creation all right the deployment got succeeded let's go to the resource so our server is ready we got the pop-up as well and here let's begin go ahead by creating one database inside the sql server we'll click on the create database Everything is grayed out because the database will be inside the same subscription and resource. So we don't need to worry about it. Now let's give one database name. So the name is Cloud Guru Amit SQL DB because it is a kind of SQL database and DB for database. So name looks good. I'll go down. Our uh, workload is development. This is not production. Uh, as per your business need, if you are uh, using it in production environment, you might need to select this. For this tutorial, uh, since uh, it's a kind of dummy, I'll go with development. Here I got to configure the compute and storage power. Since I don't need much power, I'll go ahead by clicking on basic to incur less cost for this um, tutorial. I'll click on apply. Now uh, let's go to again uh, the here down if you look. Generally, if you are, uh, you remember, Backup and storage in previous tutorials, we are selecting as locally redundant backup storage. But this time, we'll go ahead with geo redundant backup storage. Because we know that in case our primary server is down, we need to replicate to another data center in different region. For us, it will be central US, which will be secondary region. Primary is in East US, as per the architecture diagram, which we are doing. Let's go to networking tab and here, make sure to add your client ip otherwise we might need to add our firewall settings later in the server better to click it as yes to make the process easier for the query editor now uh, we'll keep everything as default rest of the things i'll go to review and create let's click on the create button arunjan aapko just ye 15 minute mein call karta hu main thoda sa busy hu all right our deployment got succeeded we'll go to our uh, resource here and here the fun will begin now we'll go to the query editor preview let's give the password which we have configured remember i mentioned that please remember your login id and password let's give our password so that we can log in let's click on okay 
So here uh, we can see the um, our IP address is not allowed. Let's uh, use the easy way, allow our IP address. So it will basically whitelist our IP address and we can now connect to our SQL database. As soon as it is uh, done, I'll click on OK. So it will try to log in once again. Now we are inside uh, the SQL um, database, Azure SQL database. And if you look here, we got no tables currently and no data inside the database server. So let's um, um, create some table. I have done the homework for you to create some uh, table there. Let's create some uh, table uh, and insert some values. This is the employee table I have created first. Let's insert uh, some values into the employee table. I have uh, put 10 dummy values there. Let's go and uh, new query. I'll control V paste the value and run it. 10 rows got affected. Now let's uh, go back. I have created another table, employee cloud guru Amit. So this is the second table. So our whole intention is to create some uh, dummy table so that we can test our um, failover thing that we are able to get the data in our secondary or replica database as well. Query succeeded. This table also got created. Let's insert some values here again, just like the first table. I'll new query. Let's paste this value, run it. So three rows got affected. Let's now perform select operations to check the inserted values. I'll first select the values for uh, or the uh, check the data for employee cloud guru Amit which is one of the tables we just created. I'll click on run. We can see the data here. That is, there were three rows which we have inserted. It's there. Looks good. Let's go ahead by um, clicking one more tab, um, new query, and we will check for the second table that is employee table as well. And let's paste it and run it. Now, here again, we can see the 10 values got inserted. And let, let me refresh this tables. And here now we can see two tables are there and that is employee and cloud guru Amit and both these uh, tables employee table the data is here and cloud guru Amit um, data is here. So looks good. This is our um, primary uh, server or the primary database. If you look at the architecture diagram here, so we are currently here. I have created primary SQL server. Then inside the database. Now I have created two tables. Uh, that is um, employee table and cloud guru Amit employee table, which is the second table and inserted values there. So this is done. Now let's configure the replica or secondary server such that if the primary server is down, the data should be available in secondary server, which is in different region. Please note, right? It is in central US. Currently our primary is in East US region, which is different region. Let's go ahead by uh, configure the secondary SQL server. So let me quickly duplicate this tab. Now, if we go to the um, our, uh, database, uh, we were in the query data previously under the data management, we have the replicas and here we need to create one replica. This will pr basically set up our secondary server for the failover. Now let's uh, everything is grayed out. As you can see, I'll just go down. Um, we don't need to worry about the source group and all main thing to worry about is the server, which we need to create in different region. Remember our primary region is East US. Now as per the architecture diagram, we need to create in, create in the central US, which is this one. See central US. Let's go ahead by clicking on create new. Let's give one server name. I have given the suffix as replica to indicate that this is our, uh, this is my secondary server or, or the replica, right? And here we need to select the location. We can select um, any recommended uh, location uh, as per the architecture diagram. Since I have uh, used central US, I'll click here. I'll check mark this, allow Azure services to access the server. That is the query editor and all everything that without any trouble, we are able to log in. Let's uh, check this. Now I'll go down, use SQL authentication. You can use both or anything, but for this tutorial, SQL authentication is good. Let's give admin login and password. You can create different login password as well. For the simplicity, I'll give the same login and password. 
So once we are done with the password and all, let's click on OK. Now uh, we don't need to worry much about um, it's already basic because remember the primary is basic. So it has also uh, taken the basic one. We can do select a different thing. Not required. Uh, again, geo redundant is uh, good. I'll uh, go ahead by clicking on um, maybe the next allow resources to connect to the server. Yes. Let's uh, go to create and let's click on the magic button that is create. All right, our deployment is in progress for the replica or the secondary server. Let's um, wait for a while till this deployment is completed. Then we will implement the disaster recovery scenario. Our disaster recovery scenario will be, I'll purposely make the primary server as down and try to check whether the data after the switchover um, failover operation data the data is present in the secondary sql server or not in the secondary database well which uh, is our main intention right because in a business let's say there are thousands of table in the primary sql server and this region has gone down the data is not accessible what do we do we need to make the data available anywhere right because it's a production environment our data is critical for the customers and the users, right? So that they can query. So that is what we will be doing. Let's wait for a while till our secondary server is ready. All right, our deployment got succeeded. That is for the replica. Let's go to uh, our resource. And here, now if I check the replicas here, I can see my primary server, which you remember, which uh, we have created is in the East US region and the secondary or the replica is in central us as per the architecture diagram if i show you which is this one primary is in east us currently primary region and the secondary is in the central us region which now looks good so uh, let me show you once again the flashback that is for the, we have two tables um to showcase that the data will not be lost when this uh, server is down employee table and employee cloud guru amit which has uh, these uh, basically data there now let's go here and under the um secondary that is uh, our central us let's make this primary and let this um primary go down i'll click on this three dots let's wait for a while let me refresh it please make sure the replica state is in online and readable it takes some time because I've just pinned up this uh, replica. It will take some time and these buttons will be enabled. Now let's click on forced failover. So here, if you read, it will say you that it will switch the primary server to uh, uh, secondary server. That is the replica. If you look here, the replica, which is this one to primary role, right? Our replica will become the primary server and the primary will go down will automatically be secondary if it is online right but uh, for our case it will be taken down and this operation may cause data loss uh, in our in my experience i have seen um, that for one to two minutes if the data is too huge in the database uh, the server might not be available there will be there might be some downtime uh, but for this use case since we have just two tables um, um, like if you have just two tables with small values uh, not not quite much so the failover uh, will happen instantly and no data will be lost if you look let's click on uh, yes now request submitted for failover replication let's wait till the replica state changes let's wait for a while i'll refresh it all right if you look now the replica state is in pending and failover so our primary intention as per the architecture diagram was to make the primary server purposely go down so that we can check the data is available in the secondary server or not. Now let's go back to my primary server, which contain this uh, employee and these tables. If you look on the left hand side, now let's try to run this query, whether it runs or not. The query, if you check, it's taking too long and sooner or later we'll be getting the message that server is not available. See database cloud guru Amit server on is not currently available because we have purposely made it down to check our failover scenario that is our replica 
uh, will um, our uh, secondary SQL server is now active. This is let's say is gone down. What we do? We need to get the data in the secondary SQL server, right? Now that's what we'll do. There are no data. This is just for reference uh, because this server is not available currently. This was just for reference. Remember, there are two tables. Now let me go here. I'll go to the replica database. So if I see here, uh, it is currently in the failover uh, state. I'll go to the replica database. Remember, this is is in the uh, um, this is my primary one, and this is a replica. Replica. The secondary is in central US, right? Uh, let me show you once again the architecture diagram. Secondary SQL Server, central US. So let me now log into this database and check whether the tables are present or not. So this is the uh, database associated with the replica. If you check here, left hand side, server and here the database name. Let's go and click here. I'll go to the query editor. Let's try to log in. Let's click on OK. Let's add our IP address so that we can log in successfully updated server firewalls rules. Good. Looks good. Let's click on OK and try to log in once again. All right. Now, so we are in inside our replica, right? So our primary region, a primary server, which was the, which is this one is already down. Now let's check whether the data is available here or not. Yeah, the data is available, right? These two tables, employee and employee Cloud Guru Amit. If you check the data, which was present on my primary SQL server, Azure SQL um, database, employee and employee Cloud Guru Amit is now also present in employee and uh, em uh, employee Cloud Guru Amit. Now let's verify whether uh, they have the same data or not. Now I have the queries already. Um, let me paste this here and verify the correctness of data. Yeah, three rows we have inserted. Remember, for employee Cloud Guru uh, uh, Amit, the three rows here we got in the replica as well. And uh, let's check for the another table, which was the employee table. Let's copy this and paste it here. Let's paste. Um, let me paste it once again. Copy this. Copy and paste it. Let me run it. Yeah, I got the 10 rows. So that being said, we have successfully checked. Even if my primary SQL server and the database is down, I can get the data in the replica or the secondary server, which is in the um, different geographical location. Let me brush you up with the architecture diagram, what we have done. So in this tutorial, I have created primary SQL server and database from the scratch, configured everything, firewall rules, the sizes, right? Everything inside the primary SQL database, I have created two tables, employee table and Cloud Guru Amit employee table, two tables with the data we have inser inserted. Then I have created the uh, secondary server in different geographical location, which is in central US region. Then I have uh, purposely made the primary region as down, the database and the server is zapped out so that no data is accessible or available in the primary. And instantly my secondary SQL server and the database is made available. The same tables, the two tables which we have created in the primary SQL database is now available in secondary SQL database that is employee table and the Cloud Guru Amit employee table. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I hope uh, you will implement this disaster recovery scenario and failover operation in your production workloads to maximize the chances of data and for your day-to-day -day business operations. Thank you so much for watching this video. Also, please consider checking out my exclusive management cybersecurity Google Cloud courses on Udemy by searching Cloud Guru Amit or you can navigate to the URL udemy.com slash user slash Cloud Guru Amit where you will find tons of courses which will help you to boost your career by understanding the requirements of your manager, their thought processes and how a project works in an IT world. So thank you so much for watching this video.